AI is here, and quite frankly, it's here to help. So today, we're going to talk through some of the ways that I've seen AI help, some of the ways that I think can help you. Let's dive in. Welcome back to Endless Customers. My name is Alex Winter. I'm here today with Chris Dupre, our head coach, chief customer officer. Chris, welcome back to the show. Thanks, man. Thanks for being here. I love chatting with you. Uh, we got a really cool topic today. We're talking about sales. You're a sales expert. You coach and train a lot of companies on sales and how to integrate sales and marketing. But I really want to focus on artificial intelligence. And I know we talk about it a lot here at Impact and a lot as a company. But specifically, I want to get into how AI can help sales folks. So like what tools they can be using and what mentality shift they need to make so that they can do their job better, faster, stronger, all those, all those things. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a, uh, I mean, as, as we talk about AI and, and as I go around and speak to CEOs um, around North America about artificial intelligence, you know, the sales side is definitely one of the sides where like AI is at a point where it can be really, really helpful. If sales folks are proactive in their approach to trying to figure things out, right? Mm, yeah. So, you know, this goes from anything from call recordings and getting all of the important data from a call, transcribed, summarized, action items called out so that you just have all that stuff in one spot. So there's tools like that that are just great. Um, and then there's tools that you can have inside of a virtual meeting that are going to tell you things like you're using too many filler words. You're speaking too fast. You're using your hands way too much. All of those things are, are, again, like tools that are trained with AI that work through it, that can be in-call and post-call, giving us just areas where we can train on and grow with, right? That's really cool, yeah. And then there's the next wave of like, what can we do with AI? So it's funny, Al, you were actually with me, Alex, and we were with the company, um, who responds to a ton of requests for proposal, right? And the typical process this organization goes through is they get an RFP, bunch of people read through it, they then go produce a response, and if they get selected, they then have to go and interview, and it's maybe a 40-minute presentation on their end and 20 minutes of questions or Something like that. So I'm sure that there are many of you that are listening that go through some version of that. And so as we talked through, how can you leverage AI? Well, why couldn't we have AI review the RFP? Pull out the key things. Ask it for what, after reviewing it, what are the key drivers? Then we go answer it. Then we put our answer into that same conversation and say, how well did we address the RFP? Right? See how that went. And that's great. And if you do just that, you're probably going to be really good. Well, let's go to the next level. We've done all of that. And now we ask our AI, if you were on the selection committee, conducting the interviews based on this RFP and based on the response, what questions would you have for ABC Corp? Wow. Because that then allows you the opportunity to role play how you're going to present. And it might ask you questions that you weren't planning on based on the way in which you responded. Right. It's fascinating. Yeah. And, and listen, I'd love to say that, like, I just thought, but it's, it's like anything else with the AI. Like, you know, if you're in that situation, well, reviewing RFPs by yourself is painful and you miss stuff. Writing the response, you likely 
use some language that is internal to the company and not everybody's going to understand. You probably didn't fully answer the thing. And what's really cool is that that AI tool is like, we like to say at Impact, that assistant that provides insights can give us an unbiased view of what we've submitted. And that's the key. Right? And this isn't, yeah. and you don't have to have some advanced AI knowledge to do what we just talked about. This is so doable in chat GPT four. Right. 20 bucks a month. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's so true. So, and, and that's the, just to jump in here, the fascinating part was, so I'm watching you give this presentation to this company. It was really cool to be in the room because what happened in the room, it was almost like you had to be there, but we, we, I was watching these people having these light bulb moments. You're presenting these different AI tools and organically out of seeing some of these tools, they were getting these ideas and they were like, whoa, this would really help with RFPs. And it led us down this road. That's really, really interesting. And I think there's so many opportunities with AI that can help in this way that we just haven't even discovered yet. And we still are uncovering as we're starting to use it more and more. Yeah. So it's like this, you know, this idea that once you become aware of something, you then have a choice to either do something with that awareness or to knowingly not. Right. Once you know, right? yeah. Once you know, if you don't do anything with it, then you're choosing not to do something with it. Right. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Correct. And what, you know, if we use that organization as an example, or some of these vistage groups that I go to, most people come in uneducated or undereducated on what's out there for AI, right? They they automatically think chat GPT or they think AI is cheating or going to harm them, right? Very true, yeah. And the, the key is just, they just need to see it and they just need to play with it. Yeah. And that was the and shift you need to happen. That was the yeah, shift that happened cool. in the room. I, I watched that happen. We, you went into starting that conversation and that presentation with a few people being afraid and almost kind of giving you a hard time of like, Hey, we're, we're concerned about this and we're worried about safety with this and about cheating or copying mm -hmm. or whatever you want to call it. And, uh, I feel like within 20 minutes, it wasn't even 20 minutes. You already had them intrigued and they, their fear had turned more into intrigue and more into like, Oh, we were, we had a misconception of what this really was or what this really is. Yeah. Because it's change brother, yeah. like everything else it's change. Right. And so sales professionals today, you know, most of them think they're doing really well and don't want to change the thing that they're doing. And then there's the top 5% that are the ones making all the money that are on top of everything and they're doing all these things right. and they're right? fully embracing the change. Yeah. Fully embracing the change. They want more training. They want more tools to use ways to go. And so, so the thing is, is like that RFP example is an example, but let's say you just want to learn something about an organization. You haven't, you haven't done any real research yet. There are tools out there that can create a video about, anything by putting in the web address and asking it a couple of questions to show you in a video form. We did that in that workshop too. Yeah. You did a really cool demo. What was the name of that tool? I forget. Do you, so do you remember it? In video. In video. Okay. Yeah. Oh, listen, I don't, I have a free subscription to it, right? I haven't paid for it mm -hmm. to get stock imagery, but it literally, I, you use it just like ChatGPT. type in the URL and say, Make me a video about this organization highlighting things that they care about. And granted, it's just looking at what the company said publicly, right? On right, their on website. their website, exactly, yep. But you still get a sense of that organization without having to spend all that time reading through everything. Yeah. Right? So yeah. it's not, you use it to not prepare. It's like, no, it's part of your preparation. Mm -hmm. It was also right? fascinating because you ran this demo in real time in front of this group and they watched the video that, that they spit out. So you used, you used their website as the example. It's, it scrubbed their whole copy on their website. It created this video. I think we did like a 60 second video and we watched it and the, they weren't just impressed. They also organically started to go like, wow, 
we really need to update the copy on our site. And that doesn't actually represent who we are. And and it started all these conversations where like, maybe they're too close to it. So they, to get that unbiased perspective. Oh. I mean, yeah. so, so, and I know we're talking about sales, but I did the exact same thing with a client that thinks that they need to change some of their messaging. Okay. The video showed them that they talk a ton about the thing they wanted to change their message to. So it was like, so do you need to, or you already, the world already sees you as this, mm -hmm. right? So that was a good, that was a good one to, to go through. Yeah. Cause that happens right? too, where sometimes people think they need to make a change because that's what they perceive to be the reality. Right. And in, in reality, it's not always the case. Right. Which, so again, which goes back to something that Bob had, had sort of, you know, um, noted, which was like, Yes, we know AI stands for artificial intelligence, <laughs> but he said, but it also stands for assistance and insights. And I think a lot of people understand it as the assistant. It can help you write an email. It can help you write a this. It can help you with an image. It can blah, 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 blah. But the thing that I find the most valuable for sales folks are the insights it can provide because it's coming from an un... So let me rephrase this. AI has its own biases built into it that, that we're trained into it. Mm -hmm. What it doesn't have is the biases that you as a seller or marketer or owner of your organization has. So each one of us, when we're selling our product, look at it with, with a, a lens. AI doesn't have that same lens, so it can give you better questions to ask. It can help set you up better. It can do all these different things. And so as we think about it, like we could sit here and go through tool after tool, but that's not the real important thing. The real important thing for sales pros to go is, are you using AI at all in your day to day? There's going to be a whole group of people that are not. Right. And so I would challenge you to just start doing that. Just try it. Just see what, yeah, just give yeah. it, a, give it a try. Try yeah. experimenting. There's nothing wrong with that. Right. It could be as simple as using it to record calls and get your notes. It could be looking at a call transcript, asking it questions to have a little role play. It could be using it to do research before a meeting. It could be helping you write emails. But if you're not engaging with it, you're likely going to get left behind because the people that are engaging with it are going to be able to do more in the same amount of time. Yeah. And so Chris, this is a great segue too, because I want to also bring back, bring us back to the sales folks and how they can use these tools to improve their professional selves, but also how they can improve the client experience overall. So can we yeah. talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> sales folks, you might hate me for this for a second, but <laughs> most salespeople are not the best listeners in a sales call, right? Like it's a skill that everybody needs, but a lot of us just struggle with it. Yeah. So let's use an assistant to help help us guide us through the way. But with several tools, whether it's you know, Gong, Chorus, Fellow, Otter, Fathom, what with all these AI fireflies, all these AI bots that pop up and sit in our virtual meeting. Mm -hmm. We can then go ask them, hey, what were the three major concerns that the buyer talked about? Because maybe we don't remember. What was the big, what was the biggest thing that the buyer spent time talking to us about? And we can get those types of answers. And then we can craft our next email, our next communication with them in a way to show them a that we were listening b that we know that this thing's important and so we want to continue to educate them with it right so enter assignment selling but instead of just sending the normal thing you send at this point you're also bringing the conversation that you had to life by continuing that out yeah right yeah and so it is a really good use of those tools to be able to go find out what that, what was that, what was that overall summary? What was that big 
thing that that you feel like they needed more answers on, mm-hmm. right? These are things that three years ago we couldn't really get, right? We might have had the video recording, we might have had a transcript, but we're either watching the call to like put it all together or reading the transcript to try to put it all together. Now the AI can do that for us. And it really supercharges us to know all the different elements, pain points, uh, hesitations, uh, potential objections, all this stuff that helps us formulate next communication and get ready for the next call. Right. And that's key. You want right? to you want to come correct to the next call and you want to be able to get ahead of those fears, worries, doubts, concerns, and all the things that we talk about when it comes to assignment selling. Um, but on, a, on the professional side, right, there's a couple tools that I was fascinated with during this presentation that you gave that were like, it reviews your calls, not just for summaries, but it reviews your calls to like for filler words or for different things that you may like. And to me, that was crazy. I would love to watch myself back and see how many times, like I say, um, in a video or yeah. ways that I can improve so that I, I continually look more professional and more buttoned up when yeah. I'm in front of these types of people. Yeah. A bunch of tools, but there's two that I really, really recommend. Okay. The first is a tool called Virtual Sapiens. And it it sits in your meeting and will tell you, get closer, your head framing's not right, you're saying I'm too much, and it'll give you a report on body language and on some of that stuff, like how to help you communicate. That's amazing. Wow. Then there's another tool called Udly. Yeah. And I'm 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 messing around with I'm working with the team at Udly right now on this but they do the same thing sit in the meeting or you can upload recordings and it does it looks for certain things filler words pacing do you repeat things it'll even rephrase so so it looks at for conciseness and then they have added features for role playing and some of these other pieces involved in all of them but if your organization isn't doing that or let's say that you're recording your calls but nothing's really happening with them these are the types of tools that really can take it to the next level so that you can either coach your team or take it on yourself and just coach yourself by looking at what somebody else is seeing yeah totally as they watch your ball i think it removes the excuse too of like i don't have time to watch game tape i don't have time to watch all this recording because it does take time to do that so to have some of these these tools to summarize it or to give you the tldr that you need it it takes that excuse out that's like i don't have time for it and it gives you the the key things that can help you improve and can help you be better and come correct on your next calls and listen there's a thousand different use cases there's a thousand different tools i think the big thing that the sales profession has to get past is we've got to experiment with AI. And I think actually, I think the sales profession is pretty good at experimenting uh, from time to time, but it's got to start looking at how can I optimize my day so I can sell like, because you want to be selling more and doing less administrative or mundane tasks. Yes, that's the dream right there. Right. And the thing is, is that now things that that used to take a long time, you likely can have AI help you. You still have to learn the stuff. You still have to understand it, read it, watch it, do whatever. Mm -hmm. But the idea is is that you might not need to spend as much time trying to find all the stuff. Yeah, and for sales folks that are are based on you know, metrics about numbers and that's their performance, the more efficiencies you can create to get more stuff done. I don't, I don't see why you wouldn't want to do that and why you wouldn't want to bring that into your, your day to day. Yeah. 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 And, and we're, we're in this era of whatever you think you'd want an AI to do, it likely is being thought about or can do it already. Right. Like this is the mindset that I've got. And it's just, okay, well, what are the things that I need help with as a seller? I take very loose notes, so I need a note taker. I need summarizations. I need it to pull out my takeaways and my action items. I need to be able to go back to review it or summarize it. 
I need help drafting some emails sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, I have I have had to use AI to help translate stuff because I talked to a French first organization and I wanted to meet them where they were at. So, you know, video avatar of me speaking French. I don't speak French, but I spoke French in this video, right? And now, totally told me it was an avatar, but I was able to meet them where they were at. Three years ago, if I had tried to say all the things I said in French, I, I mean, I would have been reading some translated, some, like something it would have sounded horrible. Right, and your accent wouldn't have been at maybe as good as the AI had done it. And it would I have been I, even yeah, and I saw this video, and I know you, and it was hard to tell that it wasn't you. I was blown away because it still picked up the tonality of your voice, so it still sounded like Chris Dupre. It was just yeah. in French, and it was really good French, and I speak French, so it was crazy uh, to see that. Um, but I also yeah. think it's, it was fascinating. You, you told the clients ahead of time, like, hey, this, I use this AI tool to do this to meet you where they are, but what was the reaction when they got a video from you that was in fluent French? Oh, well, they all thought I spoke French. <laughs> Like, like they all thought I spoke French, yeah. right? And so, so it's a funny story for us to tell about an experience that I used. But some of you sell in many languages, right? Right, or you have employees in many different countries. Countries all over the world. Mm -hmm. AI now removes these barriers to speech. Yeah, which is right? really amazing. So there's all these things, but again, everything comes down to we have to be educated, or we're just not going to do anything. We got to get educated. We have to experiment. An experiment is different than just going all in on this and thinking it's the only way to do it. Like you have to look at what you do and say, what could be optimized if I had some assistance? What could help me do my job better? Create a hypothesis and go test it. Did it in fact help me sell better, right? So take that RFP example. Don't do it with every RFP for the next three months without saying, what is our close rate? If we did, you know, what's our close rate on RFPs? And, you know, let's say it's 20%. Well, we think if we prep this way, it can increase to 30%. And go test it and see if it did. Test how long did it, you know, document how long does it take to normally respond how long did it take when we use this new new thing did we save time again it's all about how do we create more efficiencies more capacity and at the end of the day be more successful in whatever metrics success is for our organizations yeah. that's the key to leveraging ai correctly yeah i couldn't agree more and I, the testing thing is is a huge piece and that's a key takeaway for everyone watching and listening the testing is the most important and AB testing, even in the room when we were present, when you were presenting, they were like, we should submit an RFP exactly the way you talked about using all these AI tools and seeing how that works. And then let's just do one, how we've always done it and see which one is, is better received. So you just want to get more traction and you need to start thinking almost like with your, your lab coat on and, and putting the scientist hat on. That's like, Hey, we need yeah. to, we need to compare and contrast and see how these tools work together so we can have actual data to back up. The experiments we're conducting yeah very important 100 yeah, percent. very cool chris any closing thoughts before we wrap here on sales folks with artificial intelligence yeah just, just be curious investigate figure out what you think you could use some help with um and it can span that gamut from role play assistance to note taking to email generate whatever it is but it's don't be afraid to test it's not cheating. It's it's it, it's the same. It, so if you pull out your phone to do math on the spot, that's the same level of support that AI can provide, right? Like, obviously, AI is going to give you more than just the answer. But if you're willing to pull this out to get multiply, to figure out some quote, to do some math, do the same thing with the AI to help you move the needle forward. Well said, Chris. Well said. Uh, for people who have follow-up questions, Chris is an expert in this. 
he can definitely school you on a lot of tools, on a lot of ways that your company, whatever industry you're in, could help uh, implement and use AI to your advantage. How can they get in touch with you, Chris? Yeah, I mean, you just go right through Impacts, talk to a coach, um, say you want to talk about AI and that you saw me talk, uh, or you can find me on LinkedIn. Thanks, brother. It was great to see you. And for everybody listening and watching, okay. this is Endless Customers. We'll see you on the next episode. Thank mm -hmm. you.